what are your earliest memories as a cricketer i mean cricket always runs in our family since sri lankans you know we always go out to parks and we always play around my earliest memory would be like you know playing in parks and all and at the age of 9 i actually started like my professional career but which at then i just started as a hobby you know just to keep myself fit and i i love the game so for the passion or not and then later on it just got uh, into the professional field because at like 10 and a half or like at the age of 11 one of my uh, dad's colleague was like you know there's a women's team happening camp is going on at sarja cricket stadium so why don't you like uh, take her to the trials and all and i was fortunate enough and i got selected for that tour in 2014 which happened in oman so since then i have been representing ua women's team What was the feeling like when you were first picked to represent UAE and can you also share the experience of playing your first international game I um, mean back then I was small so I didn't have much knowledge about it but I was super excited you know getting to like tour alone go alone to a place so I was super excited to get that opportunity and I actually played one game in my fi- uh, in the debut match that was in the finals and i still remember to this day only one ball came to me which i was the third man and i just picked the ball and threw it and my job was done <laughs> so that's the only like the, the memory i had from my debut so like it was a mind blowing experience and so that's the thing and i was actually like i wasn't um for the debut tour it was in oman so actually there was a case where of my, my e visa got rejected mm-hmm. because i had a baby picture in my passport because okay. in sri lanka every 10 years you get the passport renewed so i had like a toothless kavi over there so the immigration was like uh, you can't go alone without a guardian and all so that my parents actually drove me from dubai to oman so which was like a fire thing so that's like a memory for me debut tour go by with your parents so that's the thing while coming back they allowed me to like hop onto the plane so i was fortunate enough. so it's always like you need to have a cool debut uh, tour story so i would always tell out to people you know my visa got rejected but then i went on a road trip so how has your family contributed in your cricketing journey thus far they have been amazing they have been like the sole supporter especially my dad so when it comes to practices i know he would always be there whether it's 2 hours 3 hours in the heat he would always be there behind me letting me know what are the mistakes i'm doing and then after the training session so they will be like nets freed up right in the academies so he would like uh, get like a bucket of like balls and he would give me throw downs for certain shots give extra fielding or just do spot bowling so he would always be behind me and he would he never missed a match where he is always behind me so that's the thing he and my parents so my parent my mom took care of like the health part and like the food and the nutrition and my dad took care of this uh, practices and all taking me practice early coming back late so so we would have morning practices since it's very hot in dubai during the summer okay. so we would go around like 6 so if the practice session is at 6:30 we would go like half an hour early and then uh, dad would give some throw downs and then after that we would stay back for another half an hour or like one hour again dad would give me some throw downs so that's the thing kavisha uh, could you please tell us that who is your cricketing role model i mean when i was young there wasn't any women's cricket in like tv and all it used to right. be tm dilshan so dilshan was my favorite cricketer like the go to batter and all and he's a all all rounder just like me opening batter and all bowling all rounder so he pretty much set the tone for me and his agility on the field fantastic kavisha i was going through your instagram profile and uh, the two things that actually stood out for me uh, firstly that you are someone who uses a lot of motivational quotes as captions for the pictures that you post and uh, secondly that you enjoy photography a lot so can you uh, can you tell us uh, more about both of those things I mean I'm I'm more of a positive jovial person so I would like to spread around that uh, motivation to others as well so when people are down I'll just go up to them and I'm like hey why are you down crack a few jokes you know I just like to be a jovial person and actually I got into photography because uh one of our coaches during the tour he would always carry a DSLR camera okay. so it was in 2017 in the Thailand tour the uh, Asia Cup uh, Asia, uh, Asia qualifiers Great. So for the world, uh, world T20, so uh, so whenever I would be like you know having off time or bad time, I would just take his camera, take pictures and all. So that's how I fell in love for photography. So um, then after that, I bought my own uh, camera and then I started exploring around and all. 
Okay. Because uh, I just try uh, yeah. capturing memories because you know once you have that picture, there's a lot you can uh, see through and you know you remember um, remember and all just with the capture of that moment. You were the highest run getter in the recently culminated series against Hong Kong. Uh, could you please tell us that uh, what do you think, according to you, worked for you as a batter? I mean, it's just nothing much. Just keeping it simple, you know. As long as you break down what you want and keeping it super simple, it works for me. So I just like play for the merit of the ball and whatever loose balls are given, I score off that. And whatever you know, balls you need to respect, respect those. And the others just convert to singles and doubles, and it's gonna fall in place. Kavisha, do you think the fact that UAE does not get to play against some of the bigger oppositions, uh, do you think it acts as a roadblock in the growth of players and uh, affects their game? I mean, it wouldn't be an effect on the players, but yes, it can be a roadblock for such uh, for players because they we can't get to showcase our talent because UAE has a great bunch of talent and we would love to have many series like the Hong Kong bilateral series was very good for us because we got to show the world who we are and it was live broadcasted. So that's the thing. Once we have more matches or series coming, bilateral tournaments, it'll be anything. Us UAE as a talent can like you know showcase showcase who we are and who. So the world gets to know that UAE team is a very good team as well. Kavisha, uh, could you please tell us that how has the whole experience of playing in the fair break been so far for you? I mean, it's. So it's very good, you know, exciting, humble moment, you know. I would I never thought I would be in this position when I was a kid. Honestly, like getting to open with D and you know, getting to share the dressing room with Heather Knight, Laura. So it's always a dream come true for any cricketer you ask. Because we see the, these people on TV and then like, oh, like uh, during the South Africa versus India, uh, we were watching the match um, which uh, South Africa won. And we never thought I would be, I never thought that I would be sharing the dressing room with Laura Walworth. So it's like a big dream come true for me. And like, I'm just going to take every step and, you know, take it slowly and then take in all the experience I can gather from them and just have a wonderful time. A message that you want to give to all the young girls who aspire to take up the sport as a professional career? Yeah, so whatever happens in life, it's always part of the uh, procedure of making you a stronger player. So just because one stone is thrown at you doesn't mean you have to stop playing. You have to make sure to work hard and get back stronger. And then the stronger, the more hard, the harder you work, the stronger you get, the more results you get. Because the position where I come, I, I'm here, it's not because of being lazy and staying in the, you know, shelling up is just about opening up, working hard and then enjoying. The main thing is always enjoy how much of a bad time you're having. Try to find a small of spark in the in the bad times you're going to. That's what's going to help you get through all of this and just have fun and enjoy and follow your passion. If you're passionate, you have always a future ahead. How do you rate Chaya Mughal as a leader? I mean, she's a fantastic leader, so it's very easy and easy going with her and she just gives us our freedom so whenever we are down or anything she just brings all of all our stuff up so that's the thing she's a fantastic leader that's all i can mention and then uh, she's a very good friend on and off the field so that's the thing kavisha we wanted to know that what is that one thing which stands out about fair break uh, having 36 associate nations and getting to like meet new new players and then get into meet international stars at the same time, you know, the likes of English players, Aussies, South Africans. So that's the thing. That's the main unique part about Fabric is that we get to meet a lot of people, a lot of uh, young, uh, talented, aspiring uh, cricketers from all around the globe, not just the eight uh, ranking player, uh, teams, but as well as the other 36 associate nations. So it's a great platform for us people to showcase our talent and all. So there will be a lot of players who haven't like who have done exceedingly well during the qualifiers, their own regional qualifiers, bilateral series or, and all, but then they've never been to the world stage where they are known by a lot of people. So that is the fair break has given us that standard that staged for us to like go showcase your talent. And it's been like an humbling experience and I should be like thankful for fair break to be where I am.